Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts art and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Welcome to the debrief for the week of February 26th, 2018. I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I am Mike Jeter. How you doing, man? Man, I am delightful today. Are you really? Yeah, man. Is it because February is coming to an end? Oh, we can get rid of this month. Really? Jeez, man. It's cold and nasty. <laughs> I am. It, not this week, though. This week's been nice the last couple of days. I'm into it. Yeah, 50 degrees is nice when it's been 30 or yeah. 20 or whatever. So, yeah, I'm with that. I'm it, with that. It's I pot, got to work on my tan. It's pothole weather. Out. You know? Yeah, like I've, I've, I've pothole weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we've got an exciting show today. Uh, we have a couple of live guests coming in. We've got Piper Carter. She is the co-founder of We Found Hip Hop, and she's producing this big women in hip hop event that's happening at the Charles Wright Museum. Oh, dope! Yeah, she's uh, bringing her headliner with us, uh, with her too, uh, Mahogany Jones. I love that name. Uh, that is a cool name. I might change it? my name to that. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, also, uh, I got a chance to talk to John Bissa of the Hamtramck Music Fest uh, over the course of the week. So we'll hear from him and John Batdorf, who is an event manager for the V313 Vegan Festival in Detroit. First year that they're doing this. They've never done it before. It's going to have their very first uh, vegan... You, my friend, are a meat eater, are you not? Uh, yes. Have you ever... I mean, I'll eat vegetables. You will? On my pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, pe- pizza? Or my hamburger, really. Yeah, yeah there you go. See? Right? <laughs> yeah, it would have worked that way. Keep workshopping. Uh, yeah, so we got all that coming up in this podcast. Plus, we've got all your news about uh, Detroit concerts, comedy, movies, plays, and more. It's all coming up in just a bit. Stick, right, stick around. Welcome to the DVD. The quest for a co-host. I know you love the fanfare, Mike. I do, man. All the pomp and circumstance. <laughs> well, we've been looking for a co-host for the last several weeks. Yeah, we have. Uh, man. We've been auditioning different people, trying them out, letting them get a feel for the show, letting us, you know, see what we like and see if they like it, see sure. if they have fun hanging out with us. And we've got another person auditioning this week. Uh, she is a familiar voice. She's been on the show before. I think we would call her a friend of the show. Friend of the show. F-O-T-S. Yes. And our first repeat visitor, I think. Yes. Uh, Her name is Becky Scarcello. She's from Feet on the Street Tours. Uh, And we had her as a guest just a couple weeks ago. So welcome back, Becky. Hi there, guys. Becky. It's good to be back. (laughs) You enjoyed it so much you had to come back for more. Was that it? I did. I did. I didn't expect to have so much fun. Uh, So I'm happy to be here. You ever done radio before? Is this your first time? Is this... It is absolutely my first time. No radio. I've been on TV a few times. Really? But no uh, radio, no podcast. I barely knew how to listen to the podcast. Oh, <laughs> so, so you figured that out. I figured it out. I'm, I'm an expert. I'm teaching others now. That's good. We like that. Yeah. That's, that's why we had you back. And it's fun that, <laughs> funny that you said FOTS, friend of the show, because yes. that's also the acronym for my company, Feet on the Street. Feet on the Street. Oh. See? Feet on the Street, too. It's double meaning. Very so common. that was really slick. It's Yeah, I've been known to do slick stuff yeah. around here. And let's remind people, you are a lifelong Detroiter. I am. Yep. I grew up downriver. Okay. And and then what brought you into the city? Like, did you come into the city a lot as a All kid? All the time. You know, my parents are transplants, and they've lived here since the 50s. And I think when they came, my dad came for a job in Wyandotte. And um, I think they just wanted to embrace everything that was available. So I just grew up. I'm the youngest of six kids. And we always went to the city to see performances at all the various venues, um, to enjoy the parks. So it was just part of my world. So I've always loved it. And uh, then throughout my careers, I've had various different jobs always connected to the city. So Six kids. Beat that, Mike. Well, I'm the number six kid. In oh. my family. So oh, look at we, that. We share. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's like a... I'm not the baby, though. Oh, that's <laughs> a whole even, different... You're not even close. Yeah, I'm in the top third of my family. <laughs> Our, my family's in thirds. <laughs> Where's your, see, I'm, I'm first. I'm number one. I'm the oldest of Well, uh, la di da. <laughs> oldest of two, right. Right. What is that like? Uh, it's good. Okay. It's good. It's good to be I'm sure kid. it is. Right, right. <laughs> I, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know what know that, that was like. What did your parents do? Um, my dad's a chemical engineer. He's retired now. Right. But yeah, so he worked for BASF Chemical. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice. That's another acronym. I don't know what it stands for. BASF. Uh, it's uh, Feet on the Street. Oh, yes. <laughs> In German. In German. All right. Well, welcome, Becky. Uh, Thank hang you. out with us. Enjoy. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're glad yeah, you're back. Let's have a good time. I will. I'm excited. The D. Green. History lesson. All right, Becky, I know you know how we do this because you've been here before. Uh, 
I am not from the Detroit area, unlike you. Uh, right, I, am, I gather that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a trend because I mispronounce everything. Exactly. Because I don't speak French. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I'm from California. Spanish words I can deal with. Uh, honestly, the one that throws me off is when we talk about uh, El Club, and I just cannot pronounce, I have to say El Club. El Club, yes. Because he's <laughs> German. Right? right, yes, that's <laughs> it. Spanish German. <laughs> but all these French words throw me off. <laughs> so every week, Mike gives me homework. Yeah, uh, I do. He, he tells me something I got to go learn if I want to hang out with uh, you natives. Yeah, I just don't want you embarrassing me. Uh, yeah, well. Or if we're ever held up or something, someone says, quick, pronounce Shaner, and you'll pronounce <laughs> Schoner? Is is that having a lot? (laughs) More than you'd think. (laughs) What's my my homework this week? Well, your homework this week, my friend, was to uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, furniture legend, Art Van Iceland, or Elsander. Slander, sorry, Elsander. Els- yes. I, I, Not Icelander. Art I don't know Van, why I said. You know, I, I, I only know this man. a completely different person. Because he just passed away yes. at, at the beginning of the month. Uh, and so I started to hear his name, although I do owe him money. Because <laughs> Could you just move. Do you have Yes, and I furniture, bought furniture. Yeah. So even from credit. the beyond, you, yes, you owe him money. Right, yes. But I'm sure he'll find a good use for it. Because that seemed to be the, his thing. Like, he went out and, and found good use for him. So uh, the guy is, like you, a Detroit native. Uh, son of Belgian immigrants. Uh, graduated from Denby High School in 1948. Is that still... Denby is still around. Yes. Still around. Mm-hmm. Recently renovated, I believe. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. So if you're a Denby grad... You share that with uh, Mr. Art Van uh, Iceland, uh, Elslander. No wonder everybody just called Elslander. him. Yeah, just Art, Art Van. Van. Just say Art yeah, Van. Just say yeah. Art Van. Uh, he, he went into the U.S. Army, and uh, when he graduated, he went to Gruenwald Furniture. Uh, and then in 1959, he actually opened up his own furniture store over on Gratiot. And uh, he grew it, man. I mean, this is like one of those, you know, Children of Immigrants, American Dream kind of stories, really. Uh, grew to over 100 locations in five states, over 3,700 employees, uh, actually a top 10 furniture store in the U.S. doing over a billion dollars in revenue. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. You, know, you can see why he was so celebrated. But he sold it uh, last year to a private equity firm in Boston. Uh, and was doing all sorts of good things with the money. Uh, he started the A.A. A. Van Elslander Foundation, uh, and and among other things, he actually saved the Thanksgiving Day Parade. So that's an institution around here. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize there was a Thanksgiving Day Parade in Detroit until I got here. I, I think was, it was uh, the really? biggest at one point, right? Yeah, Before, biggest in the country. Yeah. It, 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 was, it beat the Macy's Day Parade? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because Hudson's was involved and everything, you know, Hudson's, Macy's. Yeah, you know. yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was bigger than that. Well, so I guess at some point, you know, 30 years ago or so, it was It, it was, was down in danger. What, what, yeah. I don't know what the... They were just down to a drumstick. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and some mashed potatoes. Maybe yeah, probably some, yeah. you know, some cranberry sauce. So, well, uh, <laughs> he wrote a check to him for $225,000. Uh, and a lot basically, of yeah, saved the, saved the parade. They've been in debt to him ever since. I mean, you know, figuratively, not literally. <laughs> uh, and and he, get, he wrote other checks too, donated more than $21 million to St. John Providence, making him the single largest donor to the health system uh, and, and lots of other stuff. But he died of cancer earlier this month. So, um, yeah, we're missing another, you know, we're, we're losing some of these, some of these, giants who from a business perspective shaped this city yeah so absolutely and some of the big philanthropists too so it's true true it's a question um because they've really sustained the various institutions in town yeah so well we're gonna have to start tithing just as soon as this podcast (laughs) takes off (laughs) we'll we'll collect we'll be the collections yeah write a check to us and we'll give some back to the community really sounds good (laughs) sounds good (laughs) all right so uh each week he gives me homework that's my homework i did my assignment my little book report there you happy i am okay that's good (laughs) uh and then i return the favor by giving him a pop quiz uh here's how it works becky i have three statements two of which are true one of which is false. Mike's got to identify the false one. He, he Does he have a good percentage of false Not wins? really, no. no. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I have a strong percentage. I mean, I'm always nailing these things. Yeah, it's at least 50. I don't oh, even think wow. it's 50. We, we're going to have to start keeping track of this. Uh, all right, Mike, you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, statement number one. At age 14, Art Van Elslander discovered his love of fashion when he took a job working at a local haberdashery called Square Menswear. Statement number two, Art Van Elslander's grandson, Henry Allen Elslander, 
co-wrote the 1996 hit film Space Jam. And statement number three. Art Van's brand new 70,000 square foot flagship store in Canton has a large dinosaur statue on the upper level. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what do you think, Becky? Are these, uh, these tough? I think I know the answer you to think this. So? I think I know the answer to <laughs> All right, well, we'll find out in a bit. Also, the Hamtramck Music Festival is coming to town, and we'll find out a little bit more about it. The Deep Three. The Deep Three. Sports Report. All right, Mike, what's going on with sports? Well, our beloved Pistons are in total disarray. Oh, man, this season's going, it's going down bad, man. But uh, good news is they uh, take on the Bucks at home, and then they get out of here. They leave our potholed roads to uh, go out, out of town, take on the Magic, the Heat, and the Cavs, which is good. That's awesome. Uh, the Red Wings, they're on the road, four away from home, which is good, too, because they haven't been doing that well. So they're going to say so long to the Hara and get out of here for four games. You know, I'd pay a lot more to see these games if there were potholes in the ice. Ooh. That would be... That'd be dangerous, though. Yes. That's why. Oh. <laughs> okay. He likes the danger. I like I just, the danger. The element of <laughs> danger. just put fire, just shoot fire out That's of the bottom. That's We should do that, too. Pyrotechnics are yes. always good. The dragons, it'll be a whole game of uh, thrill thing. I'm in. Yeah, whatever, man. Right. Anyway, they're out of town for four against the Blues, the Jets, the Wild, and the Bruins. And uh, college basketball. Big Ten regular season's over. MSU, they're the champs. Yay, MSU, the Spartans. Yeah. Uh, Number two ranked MSU Spartans is is the regular season Big Ten champ. And now starts the Big Ten tourney, which they'll play at Madison Square Garden. It's the first year for that uh, in New York City. And uh, they'll go in as a number one seed in the conference play. And they'll play March 2nd at noon against either the winner of... uh, uh, against the winner of uh, Maryland and Wisconsin. That's not a very exciting game at all. Uh, the Wolverines, they're the fifth seed hey, in the tournament. if there were potholes, it would be a more exciting game. <sighs> I think potholes is your solution to everything today. Uh, the Wolverines. <laughs> hey, you know how you keep Jeff Bezos away? What's that? Potholes. potholes. <laughs> Good it, point. It used to be cowbells. But <laughs> <laughs> of the Michigan Wolverines, uh, they had a pretty good season. They won seven in uh, seven in a row. Their last seven. Uh, they're the fifth seed in the Big Ten tournament, and they will take on a winner of Iowa and Illinois. That's awesome. It's Saturday, March third, at the Royal Oak Music Theater. WWE Woo. next. It returns to Detroit for one night of live action. Live action. Uh, yeah, man, you can see the likes of next champion Andre Chin Almas uh, with Zelina Vega. Next women's champion Ember Moon. She'll be there, and a uh, next tag team champions. Undisputed Era. I don't know what that is. Uh, Adam Cole, <laughs> Alistair Black, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream. That's actually my dancer name. And uh, <laughs> many more. Many more. They'll be there. I thought uh, your dancer name was Velveeta Dream. No, no. It used to be, uh, you know, Chocolate Bear, but <laughs> I'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> Michigan High School Athletic Association, their wrestling championship. Uh, will be held at Ford Field. That's March 2nd and 3rd. And Motor City Madness, a.k.a. the Horizon League Basketball Championships. Uh, that will be held at the Hara. So while the Red Wings and the Pistons are out of town, uh, they'll be playing there March 2nd through the 6th. Becky, I, don't, I forget. Last time you were here, did we explain to you what the Hara is? She didn't like I it. I didn't like it. Yeah, right. yeah I, I, I knew there was a reason we had you back on the show. Right, yeah. right. Listen, I get two votes. I'm bigger than both of you. Uh, <laughs> in Olympic news. Yes. The U.S., we sent the most athletes in our history over to the Winter Games, and we still finished fourth. Oof. Yeah, it wasn't that good. We didn't, we didn't do very well over there. We finished fourth in a medal count with 23. Norway cold crushed it. With 39, that's probably the reason wow. why. Yeah, that's probably the reason why uh, uh, our president wanted to uh, let them into the country. Right, we I understand. Them on our we need some, we need some athletic help with prowess. Yeah, right. What about the? You know, we should get the the shiny guy. Uh, you know, with all the the baby oil. Oh, the on. Guy? <laughs> yeah, let's let him in the country. <laughs> He'd be welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you're listening, Tongan guy, please contact <laughs> us on, at, set, at the debrief. Right. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you in touch. Yeah, we'll and, get you your know, passport. We'll get your, uh, your visa in order. <laughs> Becky wants you on the show. <laughs> All right. There's a Michigan connection uh, in the Olympics. Some winners of medals. Uh, Maya and Alex 
Shibutani. Oh, the Shib Sibs. Shib Sibs. Yeah, Sibs. Not Shib Sibs. Why did I say that? That's a sleeper. It's a tongue twister. Yes. That's when you die in your cradle. Yes. I have a fat tongue, man. It just (laughs) gets in the way. Uh, They won two bronze in uh, Ice Dance. That's awesome. Uh, Kyle Mack landing his trick, the Bloody Dracula. He earned a silver in uh, snowboarding. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty dope. And uh, Megan Keller, she's a member of the women's ice hockey team. They won gold. Woo! I like gold. Ooh, yeah, yeah, they won, man. They uh, whooped up on Canada. All right, cool. We've been joking about it, but we're actually going to talk a little bit about these potholes. because uh, They've gotten really bad, right? Man. Do we have to talk about that? We, we, I think we got to address it because I've never... Oh, it's insane. Granted, I'm not from here, but I have never seen anything like this. So No, we'll, it's, it's bad. It's next level bad. We'll get into it in a minute. This is the debrief. Want more? Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. Go to the debrief. Detroit.com. All right, guys. When's the last time you took a trip to Hamtramck? Boy. Actually, just a couple weekends ago. Oh, well, that's not bad. Where'd mm-hmm. you go? Went to the Dirty Show. Oh, Ooh. look at you. How was that? Dirty Show. It was stimulating. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first time or have you been before? Oh, uh, it was our first time, yeah. Oh, you're not like, you're not like a regular. I'm not a groupie, no. Yeah. But it was great, yeah. All right. Well, did it live up to all the hype? Um, you know, I've been to Theater Bazaar before. Yes. And so I think I had a little bit higher expectations because that's just such a production. Uh, and tons of costumes and, you know, it's really packed. So, um... It was not that, um, <laughs> but it was all, all kinds of other fantastic, phantasmic things. So, um, no, it was good. It was a good time, a good crowd. Well, we've got an excuse for you to go back to Hamtramck again, because the Hamtramck Music Fest is coming. It's going to be... It's about the same thing. Yeah, it's about the yeah, same it's thing. Like the it's like uh, it's Very it's, similar. <laughs> yeah, it's stimulating, but in different ways. Uh, actually, it's coming to town March 1st through the 4th, uh, and I had an opportunity to sit down with John Bissa. He's one of the volunteer organizers of the Hamtramck Music Fest, and for the uninitiated, I asked him, you know, what's the fest all about? Here's what he said. Uh, the Hamtramck Music Fest is a collection of all local music. We have 162 bands this year that play over the course of three nights. Um, and this year it's the first, second, and third of March um, in 21 venues, all in Hamtramck. So arguably you could walk from one end of the festival to the other. Um, and uh, for many of us, our goal is to try and see 20, 25 bands in a single night. That's a lot of bands in one night. Yeah, it is. 20 bands. Can you name 21 venues in Hamtramck? Oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> Go. The 20 Punchki places? <laughs> no. Lots of little bars. Lots of but little bars. that's a lot of local bands. It's nice yeah, to man. see people supporting local music. Uh, I actually asked John a little bit about the history of the festival. Here's what he said. It's impossible to talk about Hamtramck Music Fest without reaching back to what was the blowout. Uh, the Metro Times blowout, I think, existed for 18 years or so. It was essentially the same footprint, the same uh, kind of event. It was always coincided with the uh, sp- spring break for Wayne State students. So if you subtract our five years and then the 18 years, I guess you'd go back to 1996 or something like that would have been the first blowout. Um, and that was in Hamtramck for a very, very long time. And uh, towards the end of blowout, there were some efforts to expand it uh, into some venues in Detroit and to some venues in in Ferndale to include more regional bands, that kind of thing. At some point, uh, it, it, it was just determined there wasn't going to be a blowout anymore, whoever the powers were that, that be in that. And several of us kind of had that same feeling of, well, there should be something like this. Why don't we just pick up the mantle and run with it? And, and that's what we did. So this is obviously before my time in Detroit. Do you guys remember mm-hmm. the blowout? I do faintly. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I like. I'd like to say though, I like the name change. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a fan of blowout. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've had kids, so then I say something else. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I, I went uh, once or twice a long time ago. Yeah. All right. So now now it's the Hamtramck Music Fest. You're, you're more down with that. <laughs> I I am down with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I asked John to make the pitch. Why should people go? Here's what he told me. Well, for me, the festival is unique and compelling because it's in the city of Hamtramck. Uh, if you've not spent a lot of time in Hamtramck, it's just one of the coolest places in the whole world. And we've worked real hard with the community this year to try and ensure that businesses stay open, stay lit up, um, and maybe even offer specials, which we have on our website, to people who have wristbands for the festival. 
And so not only can you take in all the music that's going on, uh, but there's specials in the restaurants and uh, some of the other stores that are uh, in Hamtramck. Yeah, so it's a good excuse to go visit Hamtramck. Listen to some bands, eat some good food. I know. A lot of it's walkable, too, which is nice. It is. It is. I like like that neighborhood the few times. I've been there Mm -hmm. mostly for open mics, doing comedy, stuff like that. Yeah, Planet Ant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I took a clowning course there. Oh, boy. (laughs) <laughs> it was fun. It was entertaining. I got a red nose. I don't think I did get a red nose. I think they owe me. I think Planet Ant owes me. They a red owe nose. you one one red nose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll probably get it through uh, what Amazon or something. I bet like. we could treat you to a red nose. Uh, we, could, we could probably <laughs> hook you up. <laughs> um, well, look. I asked John while we were sitting down. You know, because I'm sure a lot of bands are wondering this. Local bands were saying, "Hey, how do we get into the Hamtramck Music Fest? Well, we're gonna have local musicians here a little bit later. So, you know, if, if they want to get on the bill, what's the process? So in December we roll out a um, we roll out an application. It's Tremendously gratifying to see all the response we get. We had over, I, I believe, over 300 bands who applied this year. And then each of the venues has an assigned booker. And that booker works with the bands they know and the bands that have submitted an application um, to come up with what their lineup is for their particular venue. And we have a pretty strict requirement that each booker has to choose bands from the submission pool. That gives us a lot of turnover uh, each year so that you get sort of a lot of variety and a lot of different musical types. And one thing we're real proud of is that uh, we, we really go into every kind of genre of music. So, you know, there's, there's jazz, there's hip-hop, there's punk, alternative. Uh, if, you, if you can imagine it, we have it. I like that. I like, I like a, that too. A buffet of music in Hamtramck. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, it's it's such a reasonable cost. So if you go to one venue and hear a band and you don't love it, yeah, or it's not quite your thing, you just pop over to the next one. You don't feel like you've invested this huge ticket price. Yeah, I'm all about it. Plus, you get a different beer at every place you go. That's, <laughs> there you go. That's too. the way it works. Yep. Take an Uber. Uh, all right. So, big question: Where do the proceeds from the Hamtramck Music Fest go? This year, the uh, proceeds for the Hamtramck Music Fest are going to go to uh, Hamtramck Public Schools um, Music and Culture Education Fund. So uh, we're working with them to establish a list of the, sort of their wishes for supplies, and, uh, and then we'll be buying those for them. So it's for a good cause. Can I write it off on my taxes? On your taxes? My taxes? Yes. Yeah. And, and on your taxes. And, and my taxes. <laughs> Don't mess with Texas. Uh, all right. The Hamtramck Music Festival is happening uh, March 1st through the 4th in Hamtramck, of course. I go to HamtramckMusicFest.com. You can get all the details there. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk about what's happening on stage in the theaters around town. This is the Deep Breeze. All right, guys, I got a question because obviously I'm not from this area. We may have an answer. Yeah. I and mean, we've been joking about it, but um, seriously, these potholes. Oh, yeah. Because my car is, I, I mean, my car is taking a beating. Like, I've never seen anything like this. <sighs> Take your life in your hands. Yeah, I, I think it's the worst it's ever been. I think so, too. Last year, I thought it was. But this year, it's it's absolutely horrid. Like, there's a stretch between uh, 96 and the Lodge Yeah. Um, on Middle Belt. And... It's an Olympic event, you know. It's the mogul, man. You're you're dodging and you're hitting, you know, things. You're trying to dodge the potholes, and they're pretty deep, you know. At least a, a whole tire, you know, width. Did you see that photo that's floating around social media of the guy, the the cop, actually standing? Yes, in Yes, Grand Blank, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, he's standing in the pothole, and he's about chest. High in I, there. I don't even know how that happened. That's a sinkhole. Uh, you're an engineer. Why? How well, does this work? let me explain. Um, when you make the roads out of old oatmeal, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it happens, man. What, but <laughs> this this doesn't happen everywhere, right? I mean, is this happening in Ohio? Mm. Is this happening? I'm from California. This does not happen in California. Well, you don't have the extremes that we have as far as the weather is concerned. Nor do you have, you know, four million ton trucks carrying produce and commerce up and down the interstates. Um, I mean, there are a lot of reasons. You know, shoddy materials, the the weight limits of the trucks and everything. A lot of people speculate as to why. My whole thing is, how do you fix it? That's it. How do you fix it? It's, it's horrible. I hit this pothole the other day, and I hit it so hard, I think I broke 
three branches off of my family tree. That's how hard <laughs> I hit that thing. It was terrible. <laughs> That's like 36 kids. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. You know, <laughs> Your tree has got no a lot jeters, of leaves. No jeeters on those three, three branches anymore. So, yeah, man, it, it's I, I don't know what to do. What do you do? You, you, well, we need money. Is Yeah. I, I'll be more than happy to chip in. I got five on it. I'll put five on it. Ha, has that historically been a thing here? Like, is there? Is yeah, there a... it's really the roads are really underfunded. Really? And yeah. So I was just reading an article um, that Michigan invests less in transportation per capita than every other state in the country. And we make cars here. Right. Yeah. So for instance, <sighs> Michigan spends about $154 per person. Guess what Ohio spends? Are you tell me how hundred and fifty six. Yeah, two hundred and fourteen. See, that's it. But I mean, per person. Per and person. I, I think this. We have more people, uh, a population, a bigger population than Ohio does. I think. I think. I need to look that up to verify. But okay, so if we have a larger population, and we're spending less money, I mean, come on. That, yeah, that, it's just that difference alone said it added up to. One billion dollars more a year spent well, in Ohio on their roads. And look, if there's one thing one I've billion. learned in my time here, it's that uh, Michiganders do not like being beat out by Ohio. No, and they have Chick Fil A's everywhere, right. and they have Waffle Houses. <laughs> How can that be? <laughs> it's yeah. just wrong. Yeah. So wait, which the potholes or the Chick Fil A's? Well, kind of both. Actually, <laughs> I'm okay with the Chick Fil A's. Hey, listen, potholes. I would drive over several potholes to get to a Chick Fil A. But you know what? Like, but. Amazon isn't coming here. You know, no. and and I don't know what their thinking was. I mean, I don't think any we of have us do. Mass but, transportation, but, right? But I mean, the only transportation we have is the roads, and they right. suck. They're right. terrible. So think about that. Right. We don't have mass transportation. We don't have trains, bullet trains, and trains to get us across uh, the tri- the Tri County area. We have to take the roads, so okay. everyone has a car, and the roads are horrible. I would, I would pay more money in taxes for better roads. Man, I, I would pay your money plus others, yeah, others. <laughs> right, and they're talking about lowering the tax rate, which is, I mean, this is what it's for. I mean, at its most basic level, this exactly. is what it's for. I get it's it if there are needs. some things that you don't like your money being spent on, like whatever, but like roads are pretty... Bridges, everything else. Yeah, right. that's right. some pretty basic stuff mm-hmm. there. One of so. the last X number of presidents, they've talked about uh, uh, putting money into infrastructure, and this is a prime example, but our roads, and it's across the country, but here in particular, Michigan is just one big pothole. It really is. The I, roads are literally crumbling. Well, guys, I think we should start a Kickstarter. I think we should. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to do a. I'm willing to do a fundraiser for it. You it's know? the debrief. You know, you, you pledge a hundred dollars, you get a free axle, <laughs> something like that. A new rim. Uh, <laughs> coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to talk about what we all did last week. This is the debrief. On stage. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the things that are happening on theater stages around town. City Theater has Junie B. Jones opening this weekend. I don't know what that is. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a popular children's book series. Like, yeah. what age? I mean, is this your children I, are into this book? No, no. So I would say, like, late elementary school. Yeah, oh, maybe my, my daughter's fourth, into fifth. it. She's into, she's into oh, Junie yeah, B. Jones. Oh, yeah, big time. Oh, you got to take her then. Yeah. Uh, Fisher Theater has Les Mis. Uh, uh, Michigan Opera has 27. Ringwald Theater in Ferndale has Merrily We Roll Along. The Slipstream Theater Initiative in Ferndale is doing something kind of cool. They're taking uh, Tartuffe, which is the Molière classic, and they're setting it in the founding age of Detroit. So they're reimagining it uh, with uh, Detroit's... Uh, am I pronouncing this? It's another one of these French words. I'm, you know I'm not so good with these French words. Uh... Camp- Campo. Campo. <laughs> Campo family. Who? Uh, who? Uh, we haven't done this as homework yet. I don't know who the Campo family is. Uh, well, it, it might be your next. Yeah. Why don't we assign that? Right. It might be. I don't fine. Know. Fine. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, Stagecrafters in Royal Oak has Bug that's closing. Final weekend to see that. Wayne State's Bunstel Theater has the 89th annual Spring Dance Concert. That's a lot of Spring Dance Concerts. Yes. Wow. I wonder how many years they've been doing Bollywood style at that. 
Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bollywood. I'm into it. It's fun. I'm sure you do. Hey, are you also you think you can dance, fan? Oh, I love that. See? Oh, yes. yes. If you like cucumbers, we're tag teaming him. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the, uh, the 89th annual spring dance concert, there's only two shows, March 1st and 2nd, so go check that out. Uh, Wayne State's Hillbury Theater has Aaron Posner's Stupid Effing Bird opening this weekend. Thursday, March 1st, you've got a storytelling event. The Moth is going to be at Marble Bar. The theme is tests. Have you ever been to one of these storytelling events? I have been to one. They're pretty cool, right? Yes, did super you, cool. Did you get up on stage and tell a story? <gasps> Heck no. Oh, you got to do that. I don't know. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, we we'll, could do it. We'll do shots first. Okay. Be fun. <laughs> then, shot, I, shot, then I might shot, be able shot. to. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's sold out. I mean, tickets go for that fast. The line was around. You got to plan ahead. Yeah, when the last time I went. Uh, March 1st through the 4th, you've got Paw Patrol Live, the great pirate adventure. Uh, also, gallery openings. On Thursday, March 1st, we have Kyle Rise. Irving, he's going to be exhibiting paintings at Axel Brewing Company in Ferndale. Uh, Saturday, March 3rd, you've got hammers, knives, and pretentious Latin titles. <laughs> the Art of Dick Hughes. That's going to be at Adam Art in Ferndale. Uh, and finally, on Sunday, March 4th, you've got Hinamatsuri, or Japanese Girls' Day. That's happening at the DIA. Uh, so there's going to be demonstrations, like a tea ceremony or an Ikebana flower arranging calligraphy. That's all happening in the Rivera Court over at the DIA. Nice. So uh, go check that out. Uh, coming up in just a few moments, we will talk about the stand-up comedy shows that are coming to town. This is the D Brief. About last week. Every now and then, we like to uh, take a moment and reflect on the past. See what's happened recently, uh, Becky. This is something we do where we just, you know, we talk about what happened last week. And since you're the guest, mm. uh, you know, well, what I do? did personally last yeah, week. Yeah, what'd fun? you do? Um, let's see. Well, Saturday night I had a great time. Um, went to Cafe Cortina, an old uh, old school restaurant in Farmington. It's been around since the '70s. Have you guys been? No. It's Farmington. amazing. You feel like you're popped into Italy. Everyone speaks Italian there. They start out speaking Italian, and then we'll switch to English if you need it, but everyone... And it's one of these places where you take a sip of water, and they're right on you filling up your, your water cup. You have maybe 10 people taking care of your table. So you're just full of bread and water. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you got gnocchi and all the homemade, house-made pastas and um, wonderful, wonderful dishes, like decadent. So if you want a really nice, particularly romantic night out go there. All right, good to know. I'm going to put that on my list. And then we also uh, went to a really great concert at The Cube, which is part of the whole Max and Marjorie Fisher Music Center where Orchestra Hall is. I haven't been in that building yet. Oh, you got to go. It's so well designed and the acoustics are just incredible. And The Cube is is, uh, a smaller space with some permanent seating and then they can arrange seating as, uh, as whatever the show dictates. So this had couches and little cafe tables. Oh, and we wow. saw uh, Les Nubian. There's another French word for you. Look at that. It's if not you, a Detroit, though. That's a sexy no, French word. I like that. Les <laughs> Nubian. Yeah. So they're from France. Uh, do you know this group? I uh, know them quite well. Yeah. I've been listening to them for decades. Me too. Me too. Literally decades. So they had this wonderful album that came out in 1998 that was Grammy nominated and they just kind of had no intention of breaking um, into the U.S. market but it did it just went nuts and and that's for an album that's uh, 90% in French wow so they've kind of just been these like goddess uh, yeah. idols of mine and so I heard they were coming back there and we went to see them and it was outstanding they just really really rocked it and they had a whole Detroit band backing them okay. Every member of their band was a Detroiter. Really? Yeah. And, and is the band going on tour? Or the band was just there for that. Just there for them. Oh, that's but they cool. they uh, have fallen in love with Detroit so much that they're recording their next album here with all Detroit studio musicians. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, I was really excited. To get, there was a surprise guest of the night um, named Mahogany Jones, who's a oh, wow. hey a hip hop artist and. We know. Then she came as our guest. So, yeah. but I didn't know yeah. those yeah. two. We're gonna have her yeah. in. she's gonna be awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, what, what, what about you, Mike? What? The... I just had shows, man. Uh, you're a working shows man. Shows on shows on shows. He's a working yeah. stiff over here. Yeah, I had a, a pretty cool show in uh, Canada as a fundraiser on Friday for a uh, horse farm. What? Yeah, they, I guess they they use these horses for. Uh, 
uh, treatment for uh, uh, injured kids or kids that uh, have uh, social issues and yeah. all of that. And um, it was cool, man. It was a packed out room. Uh, I killed it, of course. Would you have to bring uh, out your glue jokes? Uh, yeah, I left all of those uh, on the other side of the border. <laughs> There's some jokes that don't that don't translate. Wait, seriously, are there, are there jokes that don't work? Things that Absolutely. don't work. What doesn't work in Canada? Uh, they're not that? big on uh, racial jokes, and they're not big on uh, jokes about politics. Okay. Yeah, even though they follow our politics more, right? Um, they they just don't care for it. Huh? They they're easygoing people. They want to talk about, you know. Horses. Nicer right. things. Yeah. And hockey. Nice. Things with H's. All right. Horses and hockey. Um, but <laughs> on uh, Sunday, uh, I had a show at a smoke lounge, which is a lounge where people uh, would bring their, uh, how would I say this, their Mary Juana mm-hmm. cigarettes, and uh, they smoke right there. Now, I don't partake, but my friend runs the show, and he asked me to be on it, and uh, it was a cool show. But the problem with a show like that is you either get people that laugh too much or don't laugh at all. Oh, because of... Uh, yes, oh, because they're pretty right. relaxed. Right. And they were pretty relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, and I went up last. So, you know, yeah, it's tough. it was an experience. Yeah. Can't all be winners. <laughs> no, it can't. So there's the, there's the juxtaposition. I kill it on Friday and... Look all weird on on Sunday. I had a good week. Uh, you know, friend of the show, Greg Russell, movie yes. guy that we've had in. Uh, you Love know. Greg Russell. Uh, Greg Russell had his very first wine and recline. It's this event that he's doing over at uh, Imagine Royal Oak Theater, right? Uh, where he shows a movie, and and I didn't even realize that there were these small, cool rooms up. Uh, in the Imagine building, but there are. So, you know, there's maybe like 20, 30 seats up there. So one in Royal Oak. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And so we saw Sideways, and he does a little, like, wine and cheese beforehand, and he talks a little bit about it. it. It was a really cool event. I didn't actually, you know, we would have talked about it last week on the podcast, but we didn't know if it was going to happen because the day that we recorded this podcast, uh, unfortunately, Greg's brother passed away, yeah. uh, Cliff Russell, who's who's also, a, you know, a big guy in, in the broadcasting field here uh, in the Detroit area. Uh and I remember talking to, you know, I mean, talking yeah. to Greg about it. And he said, you know what? I, I wanted to get out of the house, Aww, which yeah. is why he still did it. Um, but it was an, it was a great event. It was really cool. And he's well, sorry a, I missed it, man. Yeah, he's yeah a that good, sounds I, neat. He is a good guy. Like, he I is. Just he's a like great guy. Him, you know, he's a... Uh, I would hang out with Greg. I, I will hang out with you, man, I did hang out with If you will allow Greg. me. Yeah. So he's doing it again next month. He's, there's another... So this is going to be a monthly thing that he does. Oh, how nice. cool. So nice. he picks nice, a nice. movie mm-hmm. and then chooses a food theme to go with it. Yeah. And it's going to be Little Miss Sunshine next month. Oh, I love that movie. Which I have not seen. But, oh, it's but a great one. Love yeah. that movie. My girlfriend tells me it's a good movie. It's really good. So what is he going to serve with that? Like Girl Scout cookies or something? I don't know, man. You will have to go see. Checking my calendar now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then the other thing I did Friday night, remember we had Bailey from Detroit History Tours yeah. on the show. Uh, well, she's got that history club, the, the Detroit History Club, and they did the scavenger hunt over to the Detroit Historical Museum. Oh, uh, right, right. And and so we went, and that was that was cool. That was fun. It was a little weird. It was a little bit like doing homework on a Friday night. <laughs> like, <laughs> but but it's uh, you know you're running around the museum with all these clues, trying to figure this out. The packet was huge. I mean, there had to have been like 150 clues in there that you had to figure out. Wow. Did you get them all? No, they were like, I we oh. maybe got a third. Like, I mean, they were hard. And how long was this? How it was, it started at eight and you had to, I think you had two hours. So I think you had everything to be in by two hours and then wow. they graded them from 10 to 11. They announced And could you 11. use phones or anything? Yeah, they're like, yeah. go ahead, Google all you want. It's not going to help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, because they, it, it it was tough, and we were running around, and there was a lot of things that actually I remember from this podcast, uh, or, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I should know that. We talked about that. What was that? And I couldn't remember. Remember it. at I the time, yeah. Memories, terrible. Um, but the, the team that won, they did actually answer every question, and they only wow. missed what? one. I, they had to be ringers. I have no idea how they did it, but I would recommend it. You know, next time the Detroit History Club does a scavenger hunt, it, it's cool. It's definitely worth it. Uh, I'd be all over that. Yeah, it's definitely worth uh, going and checking out. All right. Um, all right, comedy. <laughs> Welcome to the D. Free D. D. Free. Funny stuff. Mike, what's going on in the comedy clubs? Oh, boy. On Friday. Friday and Saturday, actually, a big Tommy's comedy club in Novi. 
Local fave Mike Stanley. He'll be headlining that. Funny dude. Yeah, man. He, uh, he moved away and he's coming back just to do those uh, two shows. Uh, also on Friday at the Crowfoot in Pontiac, Nisha Nichols presents First Friday's Comedy Showcase. Go check out some up-and-coming comics there. On Saturday at the Detroit Opera House, it's Live Lit Laughter Comedy Jam starring D. Ray Davis, Detroit's own Tony Roberts, Little, Little, Duvall, uh, Jess Hilarious, DC Young Fly, and Chico Bean. It sounds like an order I had at a Mexican restaurant, but... <laughs> But they'll be there on Saturday at the Detroit Opera House. Also this weekend at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Comedy Central's live at Gotham's favorite, Andrew Norelli. He's going to be stopping by for this weekend. On Thursday, there's a special fundraiser for the Detroit Rugby Football Club. And he'll be there also as well on Friday and Saturday for two shows each night at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. Uh, following his one-hour special, Don't Fool Yourself, that's the name of the special, uh, on Comedy Central. Uh, and he's been all over late night TV. You have Mark Norman. He'll be there uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And at the Punchline Comedy Lounge in Southfield, Brandon T. Jackson, Detroit's own Brandon T. Jackson. Uh, you might know him better as Al Pacino from uh, Tropic, Th- Tropic Thunder. He'll be here uh, Thursday through Sunday. Nice. Uh, coming up, uh, Detroit's getting its very own vegan festival, and we'll talk about it. The D. Breathe. <laughs> Hey, Becky, this is uh, a conversation that's happening nationally, and, and I think it's starting to happen here in Michigan as well, uh, and that's a conversation about guns. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, and, and it's been going on for a while, but it feels like it's coming to a head. It's, yeah, reaching and, a tipping point. And we were talking about this before we started recording tonight. You, are, you actually had an incident happen near you, yeah, right? Yeah, at um, my boys' high school, yeah, on Friday, there was... Um, a lockdown because they found a nine millimeter bullet in the hallway and, you know, didn't know what it was, took it as a serious threat and uh, called in the police. All the kids were locked into the classrooms for a couple hours while they searched the school. And found nothing? Yeah, it ended up being just an innocent mistake. Somebody had it in their, in their pocket, didn't realize it, and it fell, fell out. out. Hmm. But you got to take it seriously. These Absolutely. Days yeah, these days. Absolutely. On. I don't have kids, but both of you do. Yes. Uh, kids who are in school. So what's your... Right. After this uh, incident in Florida, uh, we've talked about, you know, homeschooling my daughter. I mean, it's that much of a, of a fear because, I mean, she'll be in fifth grade next year. And uh, it, it just seems like these incidences are, are, are happening more and more. You never know where they're coming from. They're happening at all of, you know, high school, middle school, uh, elementary school. Uh, kids get a hold of these weapons, and who knows what will happen. You know? right. Is she aware? I mean, does she watch the news? Does she she is aware of what happened in Florida. Um, uh, her mother and I, we discussed having her watch the uh, the town hall that they had on CNN, but I thought that would be too much, you know, um, because you don't want your kids to be afraid to go to school because, again, she's in fourth grade. She still has eight more years of school plus college. Right. Right. I don't want her to be afraid of every year, like, oh, I don't want to go or whatever. So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult, but you have to have that conversation you do. with your child. I we, think my message is, you know, you're safe, especially if the authorities have mm-hmm. come in, you know, but keep your wits about you. Right. You have to be aware, you know, don't panic, but be aware of your surroundings. And that whole, you know, you need to say something, not just if you see this bullet, but also if you see a kid that's just a loner, you know, and really isolated and, and doesn't have... A, a group or doesn't feel like they belong. I mean, that's where that all right. seems to start is this sense of isolation. And You know, I'm not from Michigan, and most of the places I've lived have been, uh, you know, they've been cities. They've been, frankly, coastal cities and less enthusiastic about guns. I mean, you look, right. you look at the state, there's a big hunting culture, and uh, first day of hunting season is a big deal here and, and, and things like that. What's the general take on you know just gun issues here as, as a general rule well everyone that owns a gun i mean obviously they don't want people to go to a school or, or anywhere else to shoot up 
a place, but in in response to what happened in uh, South Carolina, um, Michigan legislature passed law that you know you could carry a gun into a church, you can carry a gun into uh, uh, a school or a daycare. Um, that's scary. Yeah, that's scary. And and to me, it's just it feeds into that whole cowboy, you know, American cowboy culture that you know anything breaks out, you have your gun and someone's going to be a sharpshooter and shoot the guy. Which, and, which and is, that's kind of hard to, it's hard to swallow. Which is not so. I've been the victim of a violent crime and, and I don't carry a gun, but if I did, it wouldn't have made a difference because the crime happened so fast uh, that there's just no yeah, way. Right. You know? Uh, and I'm not saying all violent crimes are like that. I mean, obviously, there there's obviously, a, somewhere right. it could make a difference. and and But yeah, that, that's crazy. The chances me. of hurting someone you know are much right. What greater. was, was going to happen in Vegas? They were going to start shooting, you know, the windows right. up in the yeah. hotel and hope that they hit a person, right? You know, and do you, do you really want to be shooting at a school and you know where there's a bunch of kids around? So now you got two people. Well, shooting? even with the teachers, you know, some people believe in that that they should arm the teachers. You know, if what if a a teacher, I mean, how would they store their gun? Would they have to store the gun separate from the bullets uh, once they have their gun out? Um, you know, what if a, a kid is running away and gets caught in in a crossfire? Is that teacher and that teacher shoots them by accident? Right. Is, I mean, are they liable for that? You know, there's a lot of. And besides, teachers have enough stuff on their plate. Absolutely. Plans. You know, they teach have my to. kid how to multiply, you know, do her sevens and her eights in her multiplication table. I'm not, you know, come on. My whole family's teachers. My mother's a teacher. Uh, she, she's retired now, which she was. My sister is a teacher. My brother in law is a teacher. Uh, I can't imagine my no. my mother or my sister carrying a gun. I mean, that's just ridiculous. My, my brother in law grew up in rural Alaska. He did grow up in, you know, a gun culture and he learned to shoot at a mm-hmm. young age and all that. And even him, I mean, we haven't had that conversation, but I don't, I don't know that, you know, cause he takes guns seriously and, and safety seriously. And I can't imagine him carrying one around, you know, the, the elementary school kids that he coaches. Yeah. I just think it, there's so many chances for that to go so wrong right. and to put that on a teacher just makes no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, hey, if they really want to end all of that, send one of my sisters to each of these schools, and they'll teach them to teach the teachers how to give them that side eye look, that <laughs> evil look. It's That'll bad. It. It'll That'll scare you. It. It'll scare you. I I was scared out of many a bad thing. All right, that works. <laughs> the D, 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 the D, three, food and drink. All right, guys, there is a brand new food event that is coming to Detroit. Never happened before. It is called V313, and the V stands for vegan. What? Aha. Uh-huh. Are you, uh, either of you vegan there? No, but I have a couple sisters who are. Oh, really? I do. Yeah, you never dabbled, though. You never uh, experimented um, in college. <laughs> you know, once in a while, you try different things, but um, I, yeah, no, I like bacon. I understand. And Mike? Man, I want to eat cucumbers. What would make you think I would be... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you should just have shirts made up with cucumbers on it with a big circle and an X through it. <laughs> well, I'm not vegan, but I have heard about some great vegan restaurants here in, in Oh, Detroit. yeah, Vegan is Soul true, is... Yeah. is yeah. I'll I mean, eat there. that's all that people talk about. I'll eat there all day long. So I sat down with John Batdorf. He is the event manager of the V313 Vegan Festival that is happening here in Detroit. Uh, and I asked him to tell me what it's all about. V313 is a premier vegan event. The Detroit vegan scene deserves the, att- the attention that this event is going to bring to it. And we're going to bring together a lot of the leaders in a movement that's important for a lot of reasons, for people's health, for the environment, and for animal compassion, to, to name just a couple. Yeah, so I didn't even realize there was a big vegan community, but I guess that makes sense. I mean, and growing, definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah definitely. So uh, if you are a part of the vegan community, or even if you're somebody who's sitting there thinking about maybe, maybe thinking about dabbling, uh, there's going to be some panel discussions, among other things there, uh, and John told me about those. We have a panel called Vegans of Color. That's going to include Kirsten Usery, the owner of uh, Detroit Vegan Soul, and we're going to have a um, panel on plant-powered women. And um, that will be head, headed by Dr. Carrie Saunders. And then we have a third panel, w- which is called Local Vegan Resources. See, I lose on all accounts. I can't be a vegan of color. 
I cannot be a plant-powered woman, and I'm not local. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> plant-powered woman, though. I like the sound uh, of that. Right? You could, you, could be a, you could be a vegan of color. I, I could be a vegan of color, but <laughs> how would I put that on my taxes, man? What, would I, what box would I check out? Uh, so, no. <laughs> I, I, but I have heard about this restaurant, about uh, vegan, vegan Soul. Is that what yes. it is? Detroit yeah. Vegan Soul. Detroit is Vegan Soul. very, very good. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're I opening mean, up a new one. There's so many health benefits to going plant-based, you know. It's, this is great. It's good information for people. Uh, they have an MC who's going to be there. His name is Cam F. Awesome. Uh, John told me a little bit about him. Cam F. Awesome is our MC for the event. He'll be providing his vegan comedy and inspiration. He's a uh, national champion boxer on the on the Olympic track. Uh, he's got quite a story, and he'll be uh, keeping things moving on the main stage. See, Mike. You're losing out on gigs. <laughs> You're like, damn, I lost out to a vegan comedian. <laughs> You're not getting booked until you go vegan. I would think that you'd be too weak to hold a microphone. Is that is that no. something? Oh, is that no, a stereotype? No, no, no. no. Those, those, that's that a stereotype is a, I'm tossing out there. That's so outdated. Yes. Mike. Come no, on. No, come on. These guys are stronger than that's I That's why I'm, I'm losing out sure. to them because I have crappy jokes like that. Yeah, well, uh, not only that, there is also, uh, there's also speed dating going on here. John told me about that as well. Well, Veg Speed Date is a program where people can meet uh, vegans for uh, love or friendship. And uh, an equal number of male and female participants are registered ahead of time and uh, do the rounds of speed dating. And it's been going around nationally. It's quite an uh, exciting program. And we are lucky enough to have them uh, do their program at our event. So good news, guys. If uh, vegan Tinder is not working out for you, I guess you can always try vegan speed dating. Vegan speed dating. Wow. Yeah, get the hell up out of there. Right? Yeah. That's, so, uh, uh, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, the whole event uh, happens Thursday, March 8th from 3 to 9 p.m. at Eastern Market. Uh, if you want all the details on the very first... Yeah, you'll want them all. Yes, vegan mm-hmm. festival, v313.info. That's v313.info. Coming up in just a few moments, we have Piper Carter and Mahogany Jones. They're going to talk to us about women in the world of hip-hop. Action. This is the deep green. All on the screen. Mike, what's happening in, in the movie theaters? Well, a remake of the movie Death Wish has been made, and Bruce Willis is in it. I don't remember the original. What was the original? Uh, Charles Bronson. Oh. You know, some bad guys murdered his family, and he went all vigilante. Mm. Murdered a bunch of people. Now Bruce Willis is going to do that. Yeah. You remember Bruce Willis? I do. Die Hard. Do die you? Harder. I love the Die Hard. That was like 30 years ago. Yeah. I, I, Moonlight, Moonlighting predates me, but not... Uh, oh, jeez. That was a great show. It's a long time ago. But yeah. anyway, yeah, Bruce Willis is in that. And Red Sparrow uh, looks very interesting. It has Jennifer Lawrence in it. And what, what she is, she's a dancer who uh, is injured, and she's drafted to be in this elite team of... Uh, of uh, like spies type of people, you know. She's pretty badass in this. Dancing spies, got yes, it. Yes, dancing yes. spies. I'm in. It's like Black Swan yeah. meets uh, spies like us or something. <laughs> or so you think you can dance. Or so you Me. think you can dance. Ninjago. Yeah. There yes. Go. Right. Uh, We're there. <laughs> at the main art theater in uh, Royal Oak. Uh, Phantom Thread. Call me by your name. The insult. Happy end. Uh, and the party, which is a comedy, uh, is new. Uh, a fantastic woman was nominated for Academy Award for Best Foreign Film. That'll be shown there. And as usual, on Friday and Saturday midnight, my favorite time to go to the movies, Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise. Still haven't seen that, but I heard that's like one of his better films. Hmm. Uh, at the Maple Theater and Kitchen in Bloomfield, uh, same movies as at the Main Art. Same, so you can pick and choose where you want to go. But, but, uh, they also have a concert for George... Uh, it's a concert film one year after the death of uh, Beatle George Harrison. Oh, wow. And Red Sparrow. You can catch it there. Huh. Jennifer Lawrence. We just talked about it. At the Detroit Film Theater at the DIA, 2018 Academy Award Film Shorts. Uh, that'll be running until March 4th. At the Senate Theater, you can watch Annie. I don't know if it's uh, White Annie or Black Annie, but you can watch Annie. Hmm. Pick, pick and choose. There's a Black Annie? Black Annie, yeah, with uh, Jamie Foxx. Oh, a yeah. A few years ago. Does she still have red hair, though? A black person with red hair? That's happening. No, not I've seen likely. It, but not in that movie. Not in that movie. All right. No. <laughs> 
It'd be in a different movie. Freckles. Uh, th- yes. Don't trust black people, frankly. Uh, <laughs> Cinema Detroit. <laughs> Cinema Detroit has Phantom Thread, Two Trains Running, Curvature, uh, Three Billboards in the Shape of Water. Uh, at the Henry Ford, you can go watch Wally. Wow. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Yes. An American music musical journey in Dark Universe. And uh, Black Panther. Yes. Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Ten days. It has topped $700 million worldwide. And it is at four hundred and seventy-six million domestically in only ten days. That makes Amazing. it the third fastest grocer all time behind Jurassic World and The Force Awakens. Now, if you're interested in comparison, The Avengers tops all domestic gross uh, for comic book movies with just over six hundred and twenty-three million. So this is a strong showing. Are you surprised? Ten I days. Mean, yeah, that's. I I am kind of surprised. Why? I'm kind of surprised because Black Panther wasn't a popular character. Character, right. Uh, like Iron Man, him. right, right. I mean, I didn't know about Black Panther until like last year. Because I'm like, Black Panther, who needs a character like that? And then my buddy explained it to me, uh, who he was and, and the significance of Black Panther at the time it was uh, that character was created. Uh, but it's it's a good movie. It it's is great. It's, it's a, a good great movie. movie. So you were you were talking about some themes and some messages in the movie. Absolutely. That, uh, I mean, what were your big takeaways from it? Um, it it's very it's very pro black, but I also saw it as a kind of a a call to action for uh, more affluent blacks or blacks that have uh, uh, access uh, to things to go back and help your communities. Um, and that was the biggest takeaway I, I got from it. So explain what you mean by that. They, I mean, because you've well, got it, Wakanda with all the... Absolutely. And, and, and the technology and, and the vibranium. Riches of all and kinds. Riches, right. right. And, and they were isolationists. They were not going around helping other... Exactly. And, and, and part of it was they saw it as a protection. They were protecting themselves. Not necessarily that they wanted to stay away from people and not help. They just wanted to help in their, on their own terms. Um, whereas the, what I call him, the anti-villain, um, Killmonger. Anti-hero. Uh, yeah. Anti-hero, yeah. sorry. He wanted to use all of their powers and resources to help out other less fortunate blacks. Uh, across the planet, not necessarily less, for- less fortunate blacks, but just less fortunate people. Period. Right. Um, and it was a very aggressive ideology. So um, that my takeaway was that you know, like when athletes they leave, uh, you know, they grow up in, in poor places and they they become rich and they move on to nicer places. A lot of them don't reach back and help out their communities where they grew up in. So. I think that message was the biggest message I took out of that whole movie. Was like, hey, if you're if you're capable of doing it, go back and help. Don't just leave and be like, okay, I'm cool. Good luck, everybody. You know, it's like, no, go back and invest in it. And you see now a lot of athletes are more socially conscious. They're not worried about their shoe contracts. Like LeBron James, he's speaking out on it more and more. Uh, uh, Chris Paul does it. Um, uh, Steph Curry, I mean, football players taking a knee. This is something that athletes generally didn't do because they were worried about losing their contracts. Now, granted, these are bigger name athletes. They're not, you know. Yeah, but there have been athletes who have, third lost, string who have lost practice. a lot. I mean, you know, look, Colin Kaepernick, you know, he, he paid a heavy price for. Well, in, in a way, but his legend has grown even more. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know Colin Kaepernick, but now everyone knows who he is. Right. right. So he's, he's getting his. And he was smart with his money, too, so he's not hurting for money. Becky, what would you think? All those things, I, I second that. And I loved the, um, you know, the the gender roles, you know, having the women yeah, being... We, women were the, kicking ass. Oh, my gosh. It was so inspiring to see them being the warriors and the defenders. And I thought the whole thing, the whole production is just great. The right. story, too, and the music, the album's number one this week and I just think it's just really well done and and has a lot of important uh, messages for for anyone. Alright, well if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's it's really good. It's the only movie you should see. Yeah, absolutely. Forever. Well, (laughs) I don't know that I go that far. But also, tomorrow night is the Break the Chain. Yes, Uh, we talked about that last week. Yeah, that you brought up the human trafficking movie at the Maple Theater, so 7 o'clock. Right, so go see that, and then go see Black Panther yes. afterwards. So those yes. are the two must-sees. <laughs> right. True. Coming up in just a moment, we'll talk about the concerts that you should go see as well. Can't get enough. This is the D3. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts.
or wherever you find your favorite shows. You know, Mike, uh, we've got Becky over here. She's uh, co-hosting with us for the first time today. Uh, and she brought her own guest. She actually, this was a suggestion from her. And yeah, so, didn't even ask her. She's just like, hey, I, I know people. You know, I know folks. Some co-hosts bring snacks. She brings guests. That's pretty good, right? So. Yeah, guests go much further than... Uh... Um, no, and let's introduce them because uh, some absolutely amazing women here. We have Piper Carter, who is the co-founder of We Found Hip Hop, uh, producing the big culture as capital. Women in Hip Hop event that's happening March 10th at the Charles Wright Museum. Piper, welcome. Oh, uh, thank you. Nice to be here on the debrief. And you brought with you recording artist Mahogany Jones, who's going to be headlining the event. Mahogany, welcome. Thank you. Hey, you guys. So uh, let's talk about who you are and what you do. Starting with We Found Hip Hop, what is it and what's it all about? So We Found Hip Hop is actually um, a social enterprise. Um, it's called an L3C. And um, what that is is basically a combination of uh, a, a for-profit entity that has a social mission. And our mission is women in hip hop and we produce events we groom artists we do um artist development we manage artists and all of this is um so that we can have better music first of all but so that we can give women a voice in the, the space of hip hop it also includes dancers graffiti artists and anyone who would identify as a hip hop artist and tell me about the big event that's happening at the Charles Wright Museum, the uh, Culture's Capital event. Oh, my God. This event is so exciting. Basically, um, as of the launch of our newly formed organization, um, we've been invited to the Charles H. Wright Museum to showcase our roster of artists. And um, we have an amazing live band that's going to be just super incredible. We've got um, poets, we have MCs, and we're showing a film that is a short about our work and what we've been doing here in the city with women in hip hop um, approximately over the last decade. So for people who may not be familiar with the Detroit hip hop scene, I mean, talk to me about the women that we should know uh, in the hip hop world here. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna have to ask Mahogany Jones to join me because there's so many. The list well, is so is long. One right, is Mahogany Jones. One is Mahogany Jones. You put that top. I just list. made an assumption everyone knows, but yeah, you, that's one. That's the number one you should know. Mahogany Jones. Mahogany Jones. Yeah. I think we'd need a whole entire show, though, to we do. really listen, you list them out. And do I deliver or what? I you mean, do. You <laughs> do. You do. Well, you you put out a mixtape, right? Yeah. So, um, well, in Detroit in general, I mean, Detroit has. Um, always had women in hip hop. Um, there was Nikki D in the '80s and Boss oh, in the '90s, and um, even now, right? We know about our Dej Loafs and our name brands that actually get radio play and this kind of thing. And around the country, actually, we have artists known as De Essence. Um, and even inside Book the Brown riot, Book Brown. Brown. She'll be at the show. She'll be at the show. And, I mean, there's just a plethora of artists who have been here, have been making music, have been doing things. Ms. Corona, who was in 8 Mile. Um, and, and these are art who also um, is a par was a part of forming our initial organization. So there's just, the list is so, uh, and we have to tell the B-Girls too, right? Because we have Hardcore Detroit with B-Girl Mama. And um, graffiti artists too, like like Riku, um, DJs like um, Stacy J and um, Stacy Hot Wax Hale, and um, Lin DJ Linda Carter, and so yeah, we just had to get that in there. It's a multi element. I mean, how has it changed over the years? I mean, you talked about the the folks from back in the '80s and the '90s. What uh, you know? I mean, in what ways have things? evolved or gotten different and are the things that have stayed the same I think in general because of media um, spaces like um, this podcast here the debrief um, that there's more exposure I do believe that women have always been um, participating in hip hop they just haven't been showcased in the, in, the, in the ways in which they're able to get themselves out there now. Um, and so what that means is that more young girls will be able to see um, women and be able to say, hey, that's something that I could do. 
right yeah. right now mahogany i know you're not just a recording artist but you're doing a lot of other things as well i mean talk about some of the other stuff that you're doing in the hip-hop world um pretty much just it's been great to work with we found hip-hop um throughout the years i, I used to be the host and assistant and like organizing um i work with inside out and live in arts and teaching arts classes um and performance i work with dime and i teach uh, hip-hop songwriting classes with them i work with the union um and i actually am teaching my own curriculum which is a self-esteem program for girls called pure and so that's just been pretty awesome i'm a u.s musical ambassador so. yeah, what, what is that what, <laughs> do, what do you do it's fascinating. i have a card no I you have a furry hat on you, you, you know get senate confirmation <laughs> what uh... no pretty much what happens is it's been happening since like the 70s and it's um, people to people diplomacy. So our diplomats go to different countries and you know America doesn't have the best rep all the time in other countries. But what this does is that this humanizes Americans and allows other countries to engage and it's different people people they'll send people to do sports and do different literacy programs but in particular music is one of those things that is a language that um, is a language of love it's food and music food and music kind of just crosses all of the um, bridges it creates a bridge and so pretty much I go to different countries and perform tour with my band and, and I'll teach workshops and just engage yeah. with the people and yeah, we, you know, we walk away with an experience of like maybe some of the stereotypes we had in our head about these different countries. And normally it's third world countries that we're sent to. Um, and they get to walk away with like, yeah, not all Americans are arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have like a favorite moment or like an eye opening moment on one of those trips? Um, Haiti. I've been. Well, the one that I'm. <laughs> The last trip I went to, I went to Pakistan. I've been to, I think, being in Pakistan and being in Sudan. And I think um, just a lot of the perceptions that I've had um, were just altered and shifted. And just having lifelong friends, like I still have friends that I connect with from Sudan. And we just still talk. And it's like a, a second home. So too many moments. <laughs> wow. See, I think I could do that. What? Be, be a, an ambassador? Be, be a comedy ambassador? Yeah, yeah, be a comedy yeah. ambassador. Oh, yeah. He's a comedian over here. He's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll go over there. Yeah. You go? Mm-hmm. I, I have one in Nepal, so you got to come with me. I'm going oh, there. I'll go. Oh, that yeah. sounds yeah. great. Okay. Oh, I need a coat. Yeah. I wonder though. I want. I mean, I bring like Al with Tom or something. My <laughs> guess is that music would translate, uh, you know, a little bit better than comedy over this is true. international Possibly lines. Is true. You know, I mean, do you run into other hip hop artists in, in your travels? I think that is the thing that's awesome. You know, and I think that's what's so great about you know we found hip hop and the idea of women in hip hop because women are one of the most marginalized groups. Hip hop was a culture that was birthed out of being marginalized. Mm -hmm. And so culturally it translates well because it's a culture that you have little resources and you make the most out of the little that you have to make sure that your voice is heard and that you're not erased. And so I think that that translates all across the board and I think that's why hip hop is such a big culture. So that's the one thing that is awesome, we connect Instantly, you know. Of course, they look at me as a woman and like, "What are you going to teach us?" And I start spitting. It's like, oh, "Okay, okay." Yeah. <laughs> you should spit so, yeah. something. Oh, oh you should. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Off the dome. People are always impressed debrief, about that. The debrief rap. I, I think wait, we wait, do. Wait. Yeah. You want to see one right quick? Okay. Yeah. All right. Say a word. Uh, a healthy word. A healthy word. <laughs> uh, cucumber. Okay. Oh, All right. You man. say a word. <laughs> <laughs> cucumber. What's your word? <sighs> We'll come back to you. Yes. What's your word? Um, does it need to be a noun? Any, or? No, any word. Uh, so you got cucumber. Fabulous. Fabulous. Jokester. Jokester. Okay, wait. Cucumber. Fabulous. Jokester. Uh huh. Okay. Cucumber. Fabulous. Jokester. Uh huh. I said we. Cucumber. Oh, fabulous, so fabulous. Uh -huh. Oh, so extraordinary. Cucumber, Far fabulous, from the ordinary. Jokester. Tell uh -huh. you said we do cucumber, this. Said I fabulous, take the lime jokester. and the cucumber uh -huh. make my water cucumber, act a lot. I tell jokester. you what I do uh -huh. in this moment cucumber, is just so sublime. Fabulous, I'm chilling jokester. with these jokesters. Uh -huh. We having cucumber, so much fun. Fabulous, I said I do jokester. this and indeed uh -huh. I said we are cucumber, not dumb. I said we do this and I spit this from 
the lungs from my mind the dessert up that is oh so fine I am just so inclined to be on the rise said we do this for women in hip hop said we just don't stop said we do this this is like rock and roll do this right now from my my soul lose control when we just fry silent at the debris I lost my word it doesn't matter cause it is still so sweet look she can keep going nice she can keep going that's off the dome. Nah. That's amazing. I, I'm different. I've never freestyled with no beat. <laughs> terrible. I was about to go all Puff Daddy and all that. He was like, yeah, we won't yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, deep, take that, deep. take that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. People can't see that the mics are literally on fire right yes, now. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, Mahogany Jones and Fiber Carter, stick around. We want to talk to you a little bit more in just a sec. This is the deep, 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 deep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we get back into it, let's take a quick look at the concerts that are happening around town on Wednesday, February 28th. We've got Madonna Night, karaoke edition. It's happening at the Loving Touch in Ferndale. On Thursday, March 1st, we've got Alice Cooper at Caesars Windsor. Uh, Friday, March 2nd, we've got Chief Keef going to be at St. Andrews. Uh, Saturday, March 3rd, we've got Terry Lynn Carrington, Esperanza Spaulding, and Ravi Coltrane going to be at Garden Theater. Uh, at the Crowfoot, you've got the Goblin King Players presenting Labyrinth featuring a live shadow cast. You, this oh, is, boy. This is what you think it is, Mike. <laughs> this is the, you remember the David Bowie movie? Yeah, Labyrinth? Some, uh, some guy smoking weed, like yes. fantasy. Is that yes, it? this is Shadow Puppets <laughs> with the music. Music of Ooh. Labyrinth. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I don't know what the, what the shadows of some sort. Uh, also, you've got Living for the City, the Mosaic Singers tribute to Stevie Wonder that's going to be happening at the Redford Theater. That's actually happening two nights. Uh, and then on Sunday, March 4th, you've got Swahili Coney. This is a pop-up tasting medley at uh, El Club. Uh, it's a culinary experience that will be enjoyed to the sounds of rumba, Afrobeat, Motown classics, and jazz. Delicious. I just like saying Swahili <laughs> Coney. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. We got it. I wouldn't mind a Swahili Coney. I was so style. waiting for you to say El, El Clue. <laughs> I, 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 it's hard <laughs> not to. I'm it's really saying. hard not to. Uh, also, big announcement uh, this week: Radiohead is going to be coming to the Hara. Yeah, you need to get us some tickets. Yeah, man. the Little Caesars uh, Arena on July 22nd. This is only the second time they've been in Detroit in two decades. It's gonna sell out. That's, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, coming up in just a bit, we're gonna see how you guys do on the Art Van Pop Quiz. The D Free. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. All right, with us in studio, we have Piper Carter. She is the co-founder of We Found Hip Hop, which is uh, producing the big Culture as Capital Women in Hip Hop event that's happening at the Charles Wright Museum on March 10th. And we've got recording artist Mahogany Jones, who's going to be headlining the event. We just heard you freestyle. That was... Uh... <laughs> no beat, so don't judge me. Go listen to my oh. music. Uh, where, where can people find your music? I mean, um, MahoganyJones.com, on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere where digital outlets provide music you'll find me my latest album is sugar water what what is it like breaking it as an artist these days i mean with all the technology that's out there and everything that's going on it's good and it's bad piper's helping me get my life together in that <laughs> um you know back in the day when you could get your big break it was great um and now you can create that break but there's so much out there and everything is so immediate you know what i mean and so it's like the industry is now flooded with great music and with not so great music so to kind of break through and be a voice that breaks through that is um it's a feat and she does great. it well <laughs> she does it very well she has cultivated an audience um, and still cultivating more audiences and gets great offers to do shows in, in great places. Um, and so I think also, too, that we also have to remember that technology is just a tool. Mm -hmm. The real right. thing you have to do is you have to touch people. Mm -hmm. You have to connect with people. So um, the best way to use technology is to actually reach out and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. It's very scary you know, to reach out to a stranger, hey, uh, but the the but it's also the best thing to do, you know, to just reach out and say, hey, um, I like an article you wrote, you know, reach out to a blogger, hey, I read this, and I disagreed, or I agreed, or could you explain this a little more, and cultivate real relationships with people that can get your music out there, mm. 
Um, and also, too, that can also become fans because they'll become your advocates. And and it's important to um, make friends <laughs> with media people and people who care about music and care about writing music and care about um, talking about music because the more that you just connect with them on a human level, not promoting, not saying like, hey, listen to my album, listen oh, to my free stuff. But really just, but but finding out about them, like what are they interested in? What do they like? Where where are they going? What do they think is hot? And just connecting on those things, then you're able to utilize the technology even better because you can say something like, hey, um, what did you think about the, um, you know, that, that, that they had, uh, you know, the public enemy poster in pa- Black Panther? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can just, mm-hmm. like, have, like, real conversations about real things and not really let the technology lead you, but you lead the technology, right. you know, like that. So, right. uh, How important is it? I mean, you guys are doing so many things beyond just the music. I mean, there's a big education component to a lot of the That's work the that you do. That's the biggest part. Um, Education is key. And also, too, even in um, business, it's really important to educate your consumer or educate your follower, educate people um, that you want to continue to um, uplift you and support you. Because because what's going to happen is the more that they're engaged with you and know about you, the more excited they'll be to share. Um, I think we live in an information age. This is the age of Aquarius, so it's all about information. So information is currency, and it's really important to be able to give people something that they can share. And people want to share what they know, especially online. Mm-hmm. That's that's really important. So if they can learn more about um, how something is made or if they could learn about um, a a production technique or if they could learn about a country they've never heard of or a hip-hop artist from a country they've never heard of because they did a song with Mahogany Jones, then those are things that are what we call social capital, which is um, a part of the conversation that we're going to be having Um, in our event and why we call our event culture as capital because while we have one conversation about exploitation or the the in general conversations that happen when we have women in hip hop conversations over time has always been how our women are being exploited, how black people are being exploited, but we're going to shift that. We're in the 21st century now. We're Afrofuturists and um, we we reclaim (laughs) And, and and that's why we're reclaiming. Explain right? what that we, word means, though, for people who aren't for Afrofuturists. With it. I mean, well, it, it's a it's a term that really means like that we want to see ourselves in the future. Uh, over time, we always see the slave movie. There's a lot of slave movies about what happened in the past, but the slave always gets his butt kicked, and he never makes it into the next generation, right? And, and except for you know uh, they get castrated or something <laughs> diabolical right. like that. And Afrofuturism is more about shifting narratives like we're flying spaceships and we're we create technology out of um plant matter and you know um vibranium our, it, right like right. You know, right? Right. Right. vibranium i was gonna say except for in the jetsons because there are no black never, people in the jetsons exactly right? and over yeah. time there had never been black people in the future right and so right. so we we, like, we have to create our future mm. we have right. to write ourselves into right. our own future mm. and so that's what that that's really about writing our own selves into our own future and that is us reclaiming ourselves, reclaiming what it is that we want to say, who we are, and redefining that. And that's not based on capitalism. That's based on social capital and understanding your cultural capital. Not in an exploitive way, but in a way that you actually have something that you have to share that that is valuable. And I want to say something to that. So when Piper had the idea to start these open mics, these women open mics, we like she said, mainly men would come. And when I look at the men, so it was, I think it, I'll say it's two, two things. So it was two generations, right? So it's like grown men coming. They're like in their late 20s. And then there's these young kids because Piper was just really adamant on making sure that there was like this workshop component and that we were really working with the youth and that was a major leg of 5B Gallery, right? And so... Both the young men like to see the content, to listen to the content of the young men and what they talk about. Like literally, having that space shifted a culture. To see the older men, I would run into guys who 
potty mouths, right? And our thing, one of our rules was you can't say the B word because it's like if we're here and we're celebrating women, don't call us that, right? And it would be like water. Like people wouldn't even recognize that in their raps. That's what they were doing. I would run into people five years later at, at like comedy clubs and they're doing their set and they're like, man, I can't do my set. Mahogany's here. I can't say the B word. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but genuinely check themselves and mean it. And to see now, like when I think about like Cliff, um, Cliff Notes yeah. and how, you know, his, his rap used to be just very just different and now just him having a daughter he is I can't even explain who he's become as a person a lot of the guys a right? lot super of the MC. guys super MC you know yeah. they're like really can we different. get you to come out to some comedy open mics <laughs> <laughs> right oh, <laughs> might need a culture man. shift there <laughs> that's it up I don't know yeah. Oh, man. oh no, that may break y'all's spirit. I know, right? I'm like, we gonna call you that. No, and you know what's funny? People always ask us, and that, that's a thing. So people always ask us, why don't you guys have some comedy? And I always tell them, uh uh-uh. uh. Not, not because we don't appreciate and love comedy, but we can't police comics. And I don't wanna use the word police, but comedy is a different thing. Yeah. And that's another fight. We'll have to let Monique and all them handle that. <laughs> Although, and whatever. No. Right. Oh, ladies, though, speaking to those negative um, connotations and stuff, mm-hmm. can you take a step back? Just hip hop in general, mm-hmm. uh, rappers in general, um, mm-hmm. misogyny, a lot yeah. of negativity around it. Can you kind of circle back to the origins of hip hop? I think that's really powerful to remind people of the five elements of hip hop, yeah. what it's really about. So, um, Initially, um, yeah, uh, hip hop was born out of um, creating a space that was safe um, from the gang violence, right, in in the Bronx, um, street party where everyone could come together. Um, and then, uh, you know, this was right. So people were dancing back in the seventies, <laughs> right? People, that, that was normal. Seventies and eighties was people went out and they danced. Yes, and it was a, a very culturally engaging thing that people did right they, when they came together they, they they danced and so dance was a big part of it DJing um, was part of the origin of hip hop right when um, Cool Herc took the two turntables and brought the technology from Jamaica and learned how to take that break and cut that break and put it together so that it would loop basically played like a loop of the just the break beat um, and, and, and that got people excited and he was like yeah I'm going to do that again and again and again and, and then to, so that people so that he could kind of catch himself the MC initially really just kind of distracted the crowd while the DJ had was getting the loop together so the, so initially the MC would be like throw your hands in the air over there here we go come on y'all on the left on the right and it was really just to like you know right. give instructions okay. and, and it yeah. was more than just hey Martha your lights are on you know like that. <laughs> so, so it was it was that kind of thing and then it kind of evolved and then other people started getting clever with it and then they started rhyming with it and then it, then they started battling with it and just and, and, and because of the replacement right um of the street culture and ter- instead of gang fights you had rap battles you had DJ battles you had th- you know all, all these other things and then you know the graffiti was with it, um, it that happened simultaneously even though graffiti's been here like everything else forever right. um, but it became a, a big part of the culture um, in terms of messaging and, and, and a way for them to reclaim themselves and see themselves because that was also the removal of arts and music because we were also just like we are now at a time when culture culture was shifting right um uh, we had all this urban renewal that was happening and um you know monies um that were in certain communities being removed from those communities lots of divestment and so um divestment of monies into things that mattered like education and arts and culture education and people are not going to stop being creative right and innovative they'll just figure out new ways, new ways to do right? it right and so that's what hip hop had been and just to fast forward now in 2016 i believe um there has been a 10th element of hip hop that's been added so we we, we had oh. okay us one had gotten us to like nine yeah and so now we have a 10th and as of 2016 um health and wellness is now the um 10th element of hip hop ah. so we actually have 10 elements 10 official elements of hip hop now yeah love it talk love a little it. bit more about that i mean when you say health and wellness like how is that coming through in hip hop culture so um 
Right now, I mean, you'll see a lot of vegan hip hop. Like, I'm actually part of the vegan hip hop movement as well. You know, you you see people like Dead Press. Are you going to V three one three the the vegan festival that's uh, coming up? Well, I'll Ooh, connect yeah. you. I'll connect yeah. you. Yeah. The vegan festival is we'll incredible. Hook you up. Nova, yes. We're going to talk about that. Right. Yes. 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 And so. Incredible. So yeah, I mean, you know, now now every you know you have vegan hip hop. You've got um, God Hop. You've got um, Christian hip hop. You've got, um, I mean, you've got every genre now, right? You've got country hop. You've got, I mean, you've got all these different people who see them, who have, because hip hop now is like 46 years old. So wow. you have people, I'm 46. Yeah. So it's almost ready for a parking spot closer know, to the building. Right. Well, almost yeah. ready for a parking spot closer <laughs> to the building. Yeah. Right. And thinking of people they who hip- created it, how old yeah. are they? Exactly. They're sixties. Yeah. They're yeah, in their sixties now, right? Yeah. And so hip hop now has grandchildren and great grandchildren, right? And what we're seeing, what people call the mumble rap, well, if people understand, it's we're like 46 years into the <laughs> the genre, <laughs> so it's kind of evolved, right? However, that's just in the commercial space. There's Absolutely. all this other world out there that exists, you know, where where radio is irrelevant, where podcasts are super relevant, mm. yeah. and where, um, you that's know, the true. international space, yeah. right? And so, you know, you travel, hip-hop is in every language, and every culture. And so hip hop is for the people, which is another reason we call our org We Found Hip Hop. It's not just the women are the foundation, but it's like we're the people and it's it's for us. And so we need to be the ones who who shape what it is that we want to say. And no longer should we be saying moving forward in the 21st century complaining about why commercial media is continuing to reinforce capitalism because that's the dying animal that it chooses to feed off of itself off of right Mm -hmm. and then they're looking at podcasts like yours like how can we compete and you guys are like hey like we're doing great people love us you know uh it's true right it's true they do love us so we (laughs) love you so we so so you have to so you have to like work with your value right and uplift your value and find ways there are so many there's what is seven billion people on the planet right so so looking at just the commercial space is very a small tiny space actually right that that only so many people are going to fit into but once you step into this other world right where there's internet and where there's this international and where there's this whole audience who actually cares about humanity most of the world cares about humanity and cares Mm -hmm. about kids so you know and cares about women so that's our audience that's who we're catering to the global majority so speaking of kids Mm -hmm. what do you what do you guys want that teenage girl who wants to get involved in the world of hip-hop like what do you want to say to her oh my god go ahead mahogany um that you don't have to compromise your value um that you are totally allowed to give yourself permission to be your full self and that you don't have to be a cookie cutter version of yourself, Um, that you can do whatever you want to do, whatever you put your mind to, that if you want to do something in the realm of media or hip hop, it doesn't mean that you just have to be a rapper. It doesn't mean that you have to even be a DJ. There are so many career paths and so many ways to organize and to be a part of Um, creating music and creating messages and I think most importantly tell your story the way that you were designed to tell your story and we just want to be a part of helping them and giving them tools to tell their stories awesome well, Terrific. Well, look, uh, Byra Carter and Mahogany Jones, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. The big event is happening. You tell us you know, when, where, how do people yeah. get tickets. So, you guys, actually, this whole event, you can't believe it, but it's free. Free, 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 free. <laughs> free, free. We have to put that out there. And, um, I can afford that. You yes. can afford it. Everyone. The price is right. Every kind. Yeah. And it's free because we want to make this first one really accessible. We want people to find out about what we're doing. And like I said, it's at the Charles H. Wright Museum, which is in Midtown in the Cultural District um, in Detroit. And it's March the 10th, and it's in the afternoon. It's from 2 p.m. until 5 p.m. You're going to get a free film about our work you're going to be able to talk to us and you're going to be able to get a free 
amazing concert with an incredible band and some amazing artists and you'll get to hear Mahogany Jones do her thing and um, we'll also uh, be able to find out more about what we have in store for the rest of the year is this something the kids could come to as well it's all ages the yeah, things I'm we like, do are all ages. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you, can. Yeah. 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 you can. You can. Yeah. You can. She yeah. Love it. And, and it's we'll for probably, everyone. And we'll probably have like a cipher or we'll probably have like a, a little a portion. So if she wants to experiment and just give a try. She, she will. Can. Nice. She's a showboat. <laughs> this is <Yes>. a, <laughs> nothing yeah. like me. She's nothing like me. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where she gets Very that. Very humble <laughs> individual. Yeah. yeah. And is there a website where people can go to find out more details? Yeah. You can actually either go to the Charles H. Wright website, which is the right.org. Um, it will have all the information, and you can go to our website, wefoundhiphop.com, wefoundhiphop.com, and um, when you go onto our website, you just go on our menu, and you'll see the event right there. It says uh, uh, Women in Hip Hop Women's History event at uh, the Charles H. Wright Museum. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you for Perfect. stopping by. Thank yeah, you. and thanks so much. Have a great event. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. The debrief. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Brief. All right, Becky, that's how we do it. Super fun. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> easy, right? Yeah, you can easy do that. peasy. But yeah. Look at all the stuff you learn about. More hip-hop music, and oh, you learn yeah. about vegan speed dating, which uh, I did not know was a, a thing. It's such um, a cornucopia of things that uh, I we talk you, about. I think you should become an MC. Have you ever thought about it? Uh, in my dreams, can yeah. you Can you rip it up on the ones and twos, the wheels of steel? What would be your name? You know, what would be your stage name? Probably B-Dog. B-Dog. See, I was thinking like, like BZ, like BZ Scarsdale or something like that. Ah, kind of you know? Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, <laughs> you can help me with that. No, you I can will. help me with that. Up. You guys work it out. In just a few moments, we're also going to see if you can answer the pop quiz, which is about Art Van Elslander this week. Uh, before we get there, a couple of people we got to say thank you to. Starting with Piper Carter, co founder of the We Found Hip Hop uh, group that uh, is producing the Women in Hip Hop event that's happening at the Charles Wright Museum. Go check that out. Also, Mahogany Jones, uh, who's going to be headlining, she was pretty amazing. Like, yeah. she was free styling yeah. like she wouldn't have stopped if we didn't if we stop didn't her stop, yeah, she just could have kept going great. for days uh, also John Bissa of the Hamtramck Music Fest and John Batdorf the event manager of the V313 Vegan Festival in Detroit very first one I'm ever I'm there go support there. it I, I gotta I, see the speed dating thing I just want to try Detroit Vegan Soul honestly I, I yeah 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 but I want to see the speed dating thing uh, also thank you to Jag who puts a lot of work and, and helps us yes, out quite thank a bit you sir show. Good dude. Uh, and our intern, Spencer. Thank you to him Spencer. as well. Uh, TheDebriefDetroit.com is our website. And while you're there, you can join the email list. We will send you a link to everything that's going on around town. Uh, also, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or Google Play Music. Uh, while you're there, subscribe and leave a review. That helps other people find the show. We have a mobile app. Becky, you downloaded it yet? Yes, I have. Nah, that All wasn't right. convincing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm supposed to say yes, right? Uh, yes. Download it twice. That's what you're supposed yeah. to say. doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android. We've got it for both. Uh, and if you have events, like maybe you're an event producer or you've got something going on, you can send your announcements to press, P-R-E-S-S, at thedebriefdetroit.com. All right, guys, you ready for the big pop quiz? Oh, this is my favorite part. Bring it on. Becky, listen. Bring it on. Don't, don't, I love it. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Uh, these statements are about Art Van Elslander, who passed away earlier this month. A great Detroiter. Two of these statements are true. One of them is false. You have to identify the false one. Statement number one. At age 14, Art Van Elslander discovered his love of fashion when he took a job working at a local haberdashery, Square Menswear. Statement number two. Art Van Elslander's grandson, Henry Allen Elslander, co-wrote the 1996 hit film Space Jam. And statement number three, Art Van's brand new 70,000 square foot flagship store in Canton has a large dinosaur statue on the upper level. What do you guys think? All right, you're the guest. You go first. I just think the, uh, the Space Jam sounds fishy. So I'm going to say that's not true. I'm in concordance with this young lady. You think that number two is the incorrect statement? Yeah, no one wrote Space Jam. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> 
just like a it's big just osmosis. Yeah, right, it's just, just like a big bang and, and then a basketball into a room. It's like, whoa, look at what happened. It's like a meteor. <laughs> well, let's find out. Ah. That's 100%. I've gotten them all right up until this point. <laughs> you are correct. There, there was no, uh, yeah, no, no, no. He had no relatives who helped write Space Jam. Uh, all right, that's the pop quiz. What's my homework, Mike? What do I got to go look up? Well, I need you to look up uh, the legendary background group, musical group, MC5. MC5? Yes. What's the MC stand for? Well, that's Go what you got to find out. All right, I gotta, all right, I'll find out. I mean, I know Kick Out the Jams, but that's all I know. Okay. So, so there's a lot more to it, huh? Yeah, one or two. All right, I, I'll go find out. MC5. I MC5. will go. I will go do my homework. Those kids were all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, look, Becky, thank you so much for joining us. Today. Oh, it was a blast. I hope, yeah. you, I hope you had fun. A great time. So, yeah, it's so fun. All right, Mike, those are our three uh, auditionists, auditioners, auditioning people. Auditionados. So I was a- auditionados. Yes. The third of three. So okay. you were the third of three. So uh, Well, hopefully you save the best for last. Well, we'll let you know. We'll uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll let you know what happens. But seriously, in all in all seriousness, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Man, this was fun. Yeah. And uh, everybody else, we will see you next week. The D Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.